Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I paint my plants and trees. So plants and trees in my sketchers are usually the supporting actors. They are not the main subject. If you paint them well, they can make your scene look more lively because trees are alive and they also provide this nice contrast, especially against cities, um, buildings, straight lines. And the reason for that is because the shapes of trees are inorganic. So when we have inorganic shapes beside all these structural or straight lines, these solid buildings, it provides a nice visual interest. In this video, I'm going to show you some examples of plants and trees in my sketches that I like as well as um, some examples that I don't like. So for this particular sketch, I try to paint the trees in a very quick and loose manner. I try to cover as large an area as possible with this light um, yellow green. And then went in to paint the darker shades with more ultramarine added. If you look closely at this sketch, I've actually drawn the outlines for the trees. So you can see some ink lines, outlines for the trees, and all these are just brush uh, tapping. And because it's ultramarine, you get to see texture. For this sketch, the trees are actually just blobs of paint. So I actually just dabbed onto the paper for all these um, trees here. You can see the shapes, they are kind of round. I cannot remember if this is because the trees are round, but this is how it looks. When I look at this sketch at a glance, I can tell that these are trees and that's good enough for me. This sketch was painted with a limited color palette of yellow ochre, Venetian red and cobalt blue. So the limitation here is you won't be able to get vibrant greens. The greens are kind of dull. So we have some plants here and there is actually a tree here, but you can see this color is obviously not green, but the shape of the tree, I think it's still there. For this sketch, the shape of the palm trees, you can see they are not that obvious. By the way, I've painted the tree trunk using, if I can remember correctly, burnt sienna mixed with some ultramarine. For the grass, I usually have yellow green and for trees and plants in the background, I usually make them darker. The greens here were mixed with lemon yellow and cerulean blue chromium. That's why you see the granulation and that's why you can see this very beautiful, lovely yellow green. This is an example of something I don't like because the shapes are not that recognizable. As in, when I look at this sketch at a glance, it's difficult to tell what's going on. And I've drawn like all the individual leaves, it looks really messy. So the shapes here are not very recognizable. And the shapes of the leaves here also not very recognizable. We see some plants at the bottom and on the right side. This is also a sketch that I don't particularly like because the shapes of the lotus leaves, they are not that recognizable. I find that sometimes I get the best results when I don't think too much. So this is an example. I just basically just drew the shapes very quickly and just painted them in this case using PY151 and cobalt blue dip. In this case, I think it works well because of the organic shape of the trees and the plants here. They contrast really nicely with the buildings in the background. More trees in the background. And here as well in the background behind the buildings. You can draw trees up close as well, but I probably don't recommend drawing the individual leaves. So for this particular sketch, I actually just drew the outline for the tree trunk, the branches, and for the leaves, they were just painted. I did not draw the leaves with pen and ink. The greens here were mixed with transparent yellow oxide, PY42, and manganese blue hue, PB15, and some of the darker areas. Um, I have androquinoid red PR177 added. 
The greens for this sketch look muted or washed out and also there is not enough contrast. Everything seems to be like a mid value. So this part here, the trees in the background certainly could be much darker. So if you use the wrong, if you pick the wrong colors to mix your greens, uh, you may not be able to produce vibrant greens or dark greens. So for example, with this earlier sketch, this was mixed with transparent yellow oxide and manganese blue hue. If you use manganese blue hue, you will not be able to mix like a really dark green. And also this particular combination doesn't give you that really vibrant green. This is the mix you can expect. Here's another example of washed out greens. Uh, these three colors are from the Art Graph color set and the colors are not that vibrant. This looks like a cobalt blue. So um, in this case, I wasn't able to mix like a really dark color to get that contrast. The colors here appear to be a bit washed out as well. When painting, sometimes I may get lazy or impatient and I don't emphasize the shape. So in this case, you can see this tree, it looks like a circular blob. Whereas this tree here on the right side, you can still see some organic shapes, but here, the shape here is not that recognizable. I like the trees here. They were mixed with PY154 and PB74, cobalt blue deep. Now with cobalt blue deep, you won't be able to mix a really dark color. So if you want a really dark color, it's best you mix it with ultramarine. These are some sketches that I drew in Bali, Indonesia. So the watercolor palette that I used for this particular trip, if I remember correctly, is the Gansai Tambi watercolor set. So with that particular set, the colors, the mixtures, they are a bit chalky. So the colors, they are not as vibrant compared to other brands, which is why you see the colors, they are a bit muted. So here I actually <laughs> drew a lot of leaves um, and here as well I drew a lot of leaves. So if you want to draw a lot of leaves, um, you have to draw them like really quick because um, drawing all these details, they take up a lot of time. And see this shape here, which is not green. This is actually a tree in the background. I'm not that great at painting mountains or landscapes. Rice Terrace in the background with some palm trees. Ideally for plants and trees in the foreground that are nearer to you, you can draw them with thicker lines. And for plants and trees in the background, you should draw them with thinner lines. Or you can just leave out the lines and just paint the shapes instead. So this is also a very detailed sketch, but the colors are a bit washed out. Not just that, you can see the mixture is also not very transparent. So some of the paint actually covered the line art beneath. I actually like this sketch a lot, even though technically speaking, it's not the best. However, when I look at this sketch, I can remember the wonderful trip that I had with my friends in Bali. And I can also remember there was a couple taking wedding photos here in front of this temple. When you have like a bunch of trees standing side by side, you don't have to draw the uh, individual trees. You don't have to draw the boundary of the ages. You can just group them together as this big shape. And for plants and trees in the background, again, you don't have to draw that much details because they are so far away. You shouldn't draw so much details for elements that are further away. I like this tree because the shape is very organic. And sometimes I like to draw additional details at the bottom of the tree to create the shadow effect of the leaves. I like the trees in this sketch because they provide these uh, inorganic shapes in this sketch where all the other elements are very angular and very straight. And now let me show you how I mix my greens. 
So if I were to mix my greens using primary colors, I would usually use a mid yellow, either azo yellow, hansai yellow medium, or nickel azo yellow. And for the blues, it's either thal blue or French ultramarine. Usually, I use hansai yellow medium and French ultramarine. Now, if I want to save time, um, I would use pre-mixed greens like sap green and thalo green. If I have to paint large areas of greens, then I will use pre-mixed greens or convenient greens. Sap green is one of my favorite. By the way, I'm using Jackson's Art Paint today because I'm trying to use up the tubes. Another advantage of using pre-mixed greens is it can help you keep your yellows clean. So if you mix your greens with yellow and blue and you dab the blue into the yellow again, um, it's going to make the yellow dirty. Yellow is a color that's very easy to get dirty and it's very difficult to get it clean again. All right, let's mix some green. So I'm going to draw um, just a tree here, some very generic tree. And for this particular tree, I'm going to have outlines for the leaves. And for the other tree here, I'm just going to draw the branches and the tree trunk without any outlines for the tree. This is just a color mixing exercise. This is PY154. So if I see greens that have yellow, I may paint yellow first and have the paint mix on the paper later. But in this case, I actually have to add a bit more water so that when I add the blue later, there is enough water for the blue to flow around. Or you can pre-mix your green on the palette, like what I've done here, and paint it. So for the boundary, I'm going to make this shape more organic, rather than having this uh, look like a blob. So the key to actually painting um, trees is um, observation. So the more you study trees, the more accurately you can paint them. For the tree trunk, I'm going to use burnt sienna. This is pure burnt sienna. And to make it darker, I can add some ultramarine. Oops, the paint is still wet. That's why it's going up. You can also use this to paint the shadows, the shadow beneath the tree. And if you don't mix the color, um, your paint completely, you can see color separation, which is uh, quite nice. So this is PY154 and French Ultramarine. And this for your reference is Sap Green. This is Jackson's Arts version. This is quite nice. So sometimes when it's wet, I would add ultramarine very quickly to make some of the areas darker. I can also use this brush to add some textures at the edges. While we wait for this to dry, let's play around with other colors. So this is Crinocridon Gold. So you can mix this with ultramarine as well to get a green and it's a slightly muted green. So you can try different combination of yellow and blue to get the green you like. I recommend you use a limited color palette, basically use the yellow and blue that you are already using uh, in your sketch. So let's see what happens when we add more ultramarine here. So we can actually get a nice green. I 
and you can create all this very interesting uh, color blend just by using wet on wet techniques just charging uh, some color when the wash is still wet to have the colors blend cerulean blue is a color that i like to use a lot when it comes to mixing green so i like this color because it's a lovely color and it has very lovely granulation you can also use phthalo blue with yellow to get a green that looks kind of like this but you won't be able to get the granulation because phthalo blue does not granulate and because cerulean blue is actually a color with low tinting strength uh, which means it's difficult for me to make this mixture dark to get this to look darker i have to add ultramarine so i may use this to uh, paint shadows remember shapes are very important so sometimes you will want to make sure that your shapes are very recognizable in this case when someone looks at this immediately he or she will be able to tell that this is a plant all right so the first sketch at the top is now dry i can add some ultramarine to make some of the areas darker the bottom of the tree will be darker basically if the light is coming from this direction the bottom right will be darker I'm going to just dab the paint like this so just um, I think if you have one really want your trees to look good you have to practice um, I'm always practicing for this quick sketch I'm going to paint using phthalo blue and py 154 so once again I have the yellow here and I have phthalo blue be careful when you're using phthalo blue because it's a color with really high tinting strength you just need to use a little bit of phthalo blue and you can get like really extremely vibrant colors the green here is going to look a bit unnatural because you seldom see greens so clean so vibrant in nature which is why I prefer to use French ultramarine instead so this tree doesn't look that great let me try and make this shape more organic sometimes it's good to have the tree overlap the building so that you can create some uh, foreground and background wow this is this phthalo blue is incredibly vibrant and to make the green darker i just have to use a cool red i usually use magenta or you can use uh, quinacridon rose any of the quinacridon reds is going to make the green darker sometimes you have to play with positive and negative shapes to make your sketch make your painting look more interesting so for the fans i've decided to make it uh, lighter compared to the green and sometimes it's good to like work fast if you work slow if you work slow people can actually sense your hesitance phthalo green is an excellent color to use if you want to paint something um, darker like if you want to paint the shadows for the trees you just have to add some cool red and immediately you can see just how dark this is so usually when I paint my greens um, as mentioned earlier I would use mid yellow with French ultramarine to paint the general green and I may use phthalo green mixed with a cool red to paint the much darker shadows if you have cadmium yellow you can use that to create some interesting effects as well because this is opaque so you can actually 
use the opacity to uh, create some effects. So the initial wash here was this mixed green, then I used this mixed phthalo green to create the darker color, the darker shade here, and now I can use this opaque cadmium yellow to paint over the darker color. I won't be able to use the initial wash because that's transparent. If you want to practice painting greens, uh, you can just draw a very quick sketch just to give you something to uh, paint on. So for example here, I've drawn a really quick building and some trees in the background just for painting. You can just paint the trees, you don't even need to paint the buildings like what I've done earlier. If you need some reference photo, you can check out the folder or the download link that I have for you in the video description below. Oh, before you go, do consider supporting me on Patreon to help me create more tutorials like this. And my patrons get access to all the full length drawing tutorials that I have created over the last few years. You can check out my Patreon link in the video description below. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!